You construct an open box with a square base from 133 square inches of material. The height of the box is 3 inches. What are the dimensions of the box in inches? Surface area is the amount of box that you use or material that you use to construct the box. Now we're told it's a square base, so that means that we have X by X for the bottom. A height of 3 inches was in the description. It's an open box, so we don't have to account for the top of it. The surface area is 133 square inches. The bottom of this box is X by X. That's X squared. The front, back, and two sides are all 3 by X in measurement. 3 by X. So there's four front, back, sides of 3X. Okay, my clock went off, so let me repeat that. Surface area is 133 square inches of material. The bottom is X by X or X squared. And then there are four sides that are 3 by X in measurement. 133 equals x squared plus 12x. Bring 133 over. x squared plus 12x minus 133. We could try to factor it. If you wanted to just go right into quadratic formula, we know how to do that. a is 1, b is 12, c is negative 133. So we have negative 12 plus or minus 12 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 133, all that over 2 times 1. So we have negative 12 plus or minus the square root of 760, 676, excuse me, 676, which has a square root of 26, all over 2. Negative 12 plus 26 over 2 is 14 over 2, that's 7. Negative 12 minus 26 over 2, that's negative 38, divided by 2 is negative 19. Since we're talking about the length and width of a box, we're going to go with a positive 7. So if x is 7, we have a 7 by 7 by 3 box. You construct an open box from a square piece of material by cutting three centimeter squares from the corners and turning up the sides. The volume of the box is seven, or excuse me, 588 cubic centimeters. Find the dimensions of the square piece of material that you use to construct the box. Volume is length times width times height. So we're going to cut out three by three squares from all four corners, fold it up, and we will get an open top box. We are told that it's a square piece of material, so the base will be x by x. The height will be three. Well, we'll determine it to be three. No, actually, we were told. Sorry, I misread. The, square, the height of it will be three because we snipped out three by three squares. Okay, we just don't know the base yet. All right, volume is 588 cubic centimeters. The length and width will give those both a value of x because of the square base. The height is three. That gives us three x squared equals 588 divided by three, x squared equals 196. So extracting square roots, x is positive or negative, 14. The square root of 196 is 14. Because of the context of the problem, we want to take the positive one. All right, so that tells us we have a 14 by 14 by 3 open top box. Going back to our original piece of material, if x is 14 and each little h is 3, we have 14 plus a couple of H's, that's 20 total. And then the same thing for the other side, X plus 2H, because we have X here, a couple of H's from the cutouts, 14 plus 2 times 3, that's also 20. So the original piece of material 
is 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. A rectangular classroom seats 36 students. When the seats are rearranged with three more seats in each row, the classroom has two fewer rows. Find the original number of seats in each row. Well, total row times columns has to have 36 seats in it. <coughs> Excuse me. The classroom has two fewer rows when three more seats are added to each column. Well, we'll look at it as an array like that anyways. Uh, find the original number of seats. So let's look at multiples that have 36 as their product. 36, and I'm going to let this side be rows, this side be seats. Uh, 36, you can write as 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9, and finally 6 by 6. Well, the only pairs that we can use where when you add three seats to a row or a column, I should have put column in here to be honest with you, but anyway, it's a rectangular shape. When you add three seats to each row, you have two fewer rows. This is the only pair that fits that description. Two fewer and three more. So after the adjustment, you have four rows of nine seats, but before you originally have six seats and six rows. Use the position equation at the top. S represents the height of the object in feet. V sub zero represents initial velocity of the object in feet per second. And S sub zero represents the initial height of the object in feet. T represents time in seconds. You drop a coin from the top of a building. The building has a height of 1,050 feet. Use the position equation to write a mathematical model for the height of the coin. Okay, so we have S equals negative 16 T squared. This is the downward acceleration of gravity. That won't change. Because we drop the coin and not throw it, V sub zero is zero. We haven't thrown up or down. We just released it. The height of the building is 1050, 1050. Taking out that zero term, we have S equals negative 16 T squared plus 1,050. Find the height of the coin after two seconds. We substitute two in. S of two is negative 16 times two squared plus 1,050. Two squared is four times negative 16 is negative 64. Plus 1,050 gives us 986. So after two seconds, the coin is 986 feet above ground. How long does it take the coin to strike the ground? Well, when that happens, its height is zero. So we're going to replace S with zero this time. Negative 16 T squared is equal to, uh, i tell you what. Let's move this negative term over. 16t squared will be equal to 1050, 1050. Divide by 16, t is going to be the square root of 1050 over 16, and that's approximately 8.1 seconds. Use the position equation. Now, this one's the same from the previous slide. All the descriptions the same. Until we get to here, an aircraft flying at 400 feet over level terrain drops a supply package. Now, again, drops doesn't have any kind of help. It's just flying along, and it's dropped. So our V sub zero is zero. This is gravity and the aircraft is flying at a height of 400 feet. How long does it take for the supply package to strike the ground? S equals zero once it strikes the ground. 
0 equals negative 16t squared plus 400. Let's move the negative term over. It will become positive. Divide by 16, so t squared equals 400 over 16. t will be the square root of that value, which is approximately 5 seconds. The next part The aircraft is flying at 158 miles per hour. How far does the supply package travel horizontally during its descent? Well, we know it takes about five seconds to hit the ground. And, you know, that might actually be exactly five seconds. These I put in here by habit sometimes. I think it actually is five seconds on the dot. But anyway, long story short, our position function is based on feet per second the aircraft were given as miles per hour. 158 miles per hour can be converted to feet per second. 5,280 feet in a mile and 36 seconds or 3,600 seconds in one hour. Now, if you notice, if you stack these, each column is a truth. This middle column, 5,280 feet is equal to one mile. This, this column, one hour, is equal to 3,600 seconds. You have to figure out how you arrange these so that your miles will cancel, top and bottom, and your hours will also cancel. The units that don't cancel are feet and seconds. So this is how we convert miles per hour into feet per seconds. Grab your calculator, 158 times 5280 divided by 3,600, 158 miles per hour is approximately equal to 231.73 feet per second. Now, if the package is traveling this fast for five seconds, it will travel a horizontal distance of 1,158.7 feet.